Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Red Pill Tamales Show. I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the cut. What up, everybody? What's up, baby? Man, I ain't seen you in a few days, brother. Uh, we just got back in town yesterday, and we leave tomorrow. It's been a week, like legitimately a week. Best, yeah. t- best time of the week, and then you're gone tomorrow. Yeah, man. But we'll see you in San Antonio. Yes, I will. Uh, Rob this. will be attending the shows for all the people that are like, where's producer Rob? I'll be like, he's over there. <laughs> just Saturday, so if you want to say what's up, I'll be there Saturday night. Okay. Late show. And I, I'm going to do my best not to have you, like, helping us out too much. Like, hey, Rob, I, I need you to man this camera because I want to film my set. I'll be there, yeah. Let me know. We'll see. Uh, Freedom of Speech Tour. I know that's a controversial title. We'll be in San Antonio at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club, October 14th through the 16th. Then we head out to Raleigh, North Carolina. I normally fly southwest, so I really don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to gas my car, but gas is high. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll be there October 21st, 24th at Good Nights. Comedy Club. And then to Irvine, California, November 3rd, again, I'm scheduled to fly Southwest. Ah. They're forcing the pilots to get the jab. Before you know it, man, they're going to be like, it's a climate emergency now, and it's martial law, and now we got to have the National Guard pilots now. Anyway, Raleigh, uh, October 24th, Irvine, 11-3. And then we have Houston, Texas, November 5th through the 7th. Just added, just added, just added. Las Vegas, Nevada. I will see you at Wise Guys Comedy Club. Brand new comedy club, November 11th. And then Salt Lake City, Utah, just added. In the cut, right before we end the year. Uh, I'm going to go in real hot and polished. Um, a lot of new material I've been working on. So looking forward to Salt Lake City, November 18th, on my sister's birthday. Sorry, sister, but I got to work. Hmm. Um, lots to talk about today. If you have not joined the Patreon Please support free speech, support the content by signing up at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Join the Tamal Intelligence Agency. We just got a new Discord. It's like a private Discord server. That's right. It's a big old chat room for everybody to meet and greet and chat and have a good time. And get ratchet. That's right. For sure. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. And at the very least, sign up for our newsletter at chingobling.com. It'll just go to my website. That's going to have to be like the destination, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard uh, Eddie Griffin does a good job of having like all his stuff on his website in terms of like what he's done in the past and things like that. But, uh, you know, we got to work around these big tech, you know, Google owns YouTube. Mm -hmm. They said they're going to start banning people who don't fall in the climate change narrative. So it is what it is. Please stay in the loop. Join our newsletter. Um, Interesting times. Where you could literally be deplatformed, you could be canceled, you could be shadow banned, which apparently I am. That's what it looked like to me on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, it's been weird the last couple of, probably maybe a month now, like a couple of weeks, maybe a month, yeah. where Chingo will post something and it doesn't even get the type of reaction that the post on the What Did You Said page, which is the uh, basically the Red Belt Tamales page, gets. So it leads you to believe, because you hate to think like what kind of nefarious, you know, behind the scenes kind of things going on, but... When it's for a month straight. Yeah, it's like, am I on a list just because I'm brown and I support I support Trump? Like, yeah. I think he did a good job, and I feel like he deserved a second shot. And if you compare to how we are now, you can arguably say 2019 was a hell of a year economically, and we were better off. Even if you didn't say you supported Trump and you just said that you disapprove of Biden's work, uh-huh. you probably would still be on that same list. Like, you have to go with this old man's, uh, you know, performance in a positive note in order to be on the good graces of, like, big tech? I don't know. I'm just kind of assuming, like, they haven't told me. I mean, that's the whole point of being shadow banned. You don't really know. Right. They kind of don't just tell you you're on a list and nobody can see your shit. But, like, I went to Dallas, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, My boy Jose cut my hair at the barbershop. We took a picture together. Mm -hmm. I posted it on my page. He posted it on his. Yeah. Who got 10 times as many likes and comments? I'm going to guess not you. Jose, yeah, Jose did. So I don't care. It's Jose. Hey, man, at least they know I'm in town. I don't care if they saw it on your page or my page. Right. But it's like, it's weird. Like, my wife got to repost some shit sometimes just so motherfuckers can see it. So anyway, Dallas was great. Shout out to the Addison Improv. Six shows. <clears throat> Six shows. We were in an Airbnb. Took the whole entourage, the whole crew. My three-month-old, my three-year-old. Uh, we had to watch out for immigration checkpoints. You know, we had the babysitter <laughs> with us. We, uh, we took the little potty. You know, we learned that from Dawn. Oh, yeah. You got to have it, dude. Brought the little potty because, you know, I'm 42. I pee a lot, too. So sometimes, you know. Did it come in handy? Nah, nobody used it. That's good. Nobody used it. But um, we shipped all the merch in advance. Anyway, we're headed to San Antonio after this. And uh, shout out to Luis Juarez. Shout out to Midnight. Uh, They killed it as well. Um, 
but we're gonna have to red pill Luis Suarez because we had a debate where like you know he he went to college and all that so so yeah he's very well versed on Marxism and communism and in his mind bro he, is that the way to go bro it was like That's okay we need to finish this talk later <laughs> like I need to give you my cliff notes like brother uh communism is not where it's at like you know i love i love both those guys but he really thinks that that's the better well you know when you go to college and they they teach you about uh predatory lending and capitalism and and america's aggressive capitalism and they try to paint capitalism as bad 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 Mm. and then communism is like they cover for it's like whoa did i mean is venezuela communist like is cuba because i was like is, is Venezuela communist to you? Well, he's like, well, you know, uh, I'm not 100% sure. There's different variables. Is Cuba communist to you? Well, you know, I don't know if it's been done, you know, in, a, in the way that... In a, and I'm like, on, on paper, it sounds like a cool theory, right? It's like yeah. we're all an oasis and everyone's equal and all this and that equal, uh, equal outcomes and everyone's taken care of by the state. But then that's kind of scary because look at Cuba. Right. Look at... Look at Look at communism as it's spreading throughout Latin America. But anyway, uh, we'll finish that that convo. Uh, that's my homie. But um, you know, sometimes these colleges, bro, they yeah, <laughs> they lead you astray. Um, but anyway, more about that later. A lot to talk about, man. There's so much happening. Uh, we're gonna record a few episodes today because I bounce tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So great feedback from the show, man. Um, I passed out a ton of uh, Red Pill Tamal podcast stickers. Dope. Uh, I was hand to hand. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Hey, man, check it out. Um, gonna try to work it into the show as well. Like, hey, anybody listen to the podcast? But um, dude, people are trying to start the Let's Go Brandon chant. I like it. <clears throat> uh, people were rocking their, you know american flag it's like a tree but then the roots are mexican like mm. people were just rocking all kind of like stuff and uh there was a dude that was a police officer from chicago he was in the house i guess he had some friends and family oh, wow. um another lady police officer from dallas she's like they about to force us to jab she's like i was finna retire anyway she's like they could suck my dick really yeah she was like i'm not having this shit so let's 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 touch on before we get into like the subjects and stuff like the last episode, so we we did this last week. We recorded all three episodes in one day because you had to go to Addison, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm putting them, you know, drop them Wednesday, Friday, Monday's Chingo Chat. And uh, I, I had forgot, because we talk about a lot of stuff, right? So I forgot all the things we talked about. But what I didn't forget was the the energy you were bringing in th- th- that day because of, like, being shadow banned and not, you know, <clears throat> playing marketer. And, like, I just need people to know what's up, that I'm going to be in their town. Mm-hmm. So as I was editing it and putting it up and then editing clips and stuff, I was like, okay, let's revisit this now that you've gone through the shows. Yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. do they perform versus how you maybe thought they were? Well, none of them were sold out. Okay. I'm used to selling out, like... All of the fucking shows, damn near all of them. It's usually just like, yeah, Sunday's the only one that didn't sell out all the way, or Thursday didn't sell out all the way, but your Fridays and your Saturdays were sold out. These, I ain't sell out, not one. Now, I feel like I can attribute that to, number one, you just shadow banned. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we're trying to tweak the advertising because, check this out, we had a lot of random white folk in the house, people from Oklahoma, people that were just tourists that were staying in hotels nearby. I guess they got bored. For whatever reason, they stumbled into the show and they had a great time. Like the comments are like, dude, I ain't, we ain't never heard of you. We fucking love that shit. Because yeah, I was cool. up there saying like, uh, the FBI is going up against the moms. I was like, they're calling the moms at the student. I'm on stage at a comedy club saying, saying stuff like, the IRS is now worried about the six hundred dollars sitting in your PayPal account. Yeah. I was like, they coming after the Etsy people. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the De- Department of Homeland Security is calling the moms bitching at the school board, calling them domestic terrorists. I was like, meanwhile, we done gave eighty four billion to the actual terrorists. You know, and people just start clapping and shit. <laughs> and um, you know, there's uh, some pressure points that need to be massaged. And uh, obviously, Dave Chappelle dropped his uh, the closer over on Net, uh, Netflix over the weekend, weekend or whatever. Yeah. yeah, so Marisol and I watched it twice over the weekend. Maybe we can discuss it during like a Chingo Chat sure, or, we'll R- yeah. or RPT Short. Um, there's a lot to dissect there. Have you watched it? I watched it this morning. Okay, well, we should definitely dissect Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, make sure y'all go listen to that. But um, anyway, back to the shows. Um, can't complain too, too much, you know, because... The Friday and the Saturday shows, they were like damn near sold out. It yeah. was just like a little back <clears throat> area that wasn't fully occupied. But um, 
you know, but the crowds were great. The energy was great, especially the the Friday Saturday shows where it's just more more bodies, more laughs, more right. people. Um, great time, man. You know, working on the set always. That's what comedians. That's what we do. We always editing, polishing, rearranging, tightening up, uh, making sure you're not missing none of the ideas, and you're you're working on it. So it's always a work in progress. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, Thankfully, we were able to run ads. Rob is in charge of running ads. He's doing a great job. He's having to use Mighty Soil's account. <coughs> He's having to use my wife's Facebook account to run commercials for my shows because yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not allowed. Dude, for whatever reason. And this isn't... <clears throat> so, and maybe people that run a, an Etsy shop, funny you say that, or any kind of business that tries to run ads on Facebook, they've probably run across this, this issue where you just gets disabled. This is from people that are like that spend hundreds of millions of dollars on Facebook to people that are just running an Etsy shop, running ads, for whatever reason, something will trigger your ads account to be completely disabled. So from day mm. one, this is 10 years ago, the email list, like I always say, was always the thing that you focused on first because you could get that social media slap immediately from Google SEO or from Google in general or from Facebook, Instagram, where it's just gone. And all of that, in, all of that data that you gathered from your ads account, just gone. Odds are we probably won't even get this ads account back, but we're still, we're still trying to, you know, fight the decision to have it be stable. Like, what for? There's, there's no reason. There's absolutely no reason. So we're doing what we can with what we got. Yeah, and that's why we're having to post videos on Rumble as well. So that's like more work. However, YouTube, man, you know, it's harder and harder to color within the lines and play in their sandbox. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah, shout out to Rumble.com. Um a project we may be doing another show we're gonna figure that out on rockfin uh, trying to diversify here and um and i'm on getter g-e-t-t-r i'm having to get on getter because you know it's like the twitter killer yeah so that's <laughs> what they're calling it that's what they're calling it yeah um i'm excited i'm like oh my god i hit over 125 followers it's <laughs> like i'm literally starting from scratch but guess what that's what the fuck you gotta do yeah, the YouTube channel has just hit over 15,000, the new the CBTV, so go subscribe to that if you haven't for whatever reason, and then just go to chingabling.com. That's where that's where everything is going to be at going forward, right? Like you just said, uh, Eddie Griffin, you said makes a good... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go check his website out. So the idea... I, I haven't even seen it, but my boy Javi was telling me, but obviously like Tim Pool and yes. people that are like trying to work around... Yeah, getting everybody, you know, not off of Big Tech, but in a sense off of Big Tech into your website. So... There's some new updates for the platform they use for the website that actually uh, allows you to, it caters to members areas, so which is great, which is what I was trying to figure out how to move just a plain Jane website to somewhere that can host an actual members area like Patreon basically is. Who lets you have a members area? The the platform that we use for the website. They just launched a bunch of web, uh, updates, so I could actually now build out a members area. Oh. Just go to chingling.com. The paywall would be on the website, but we got to figure it all out. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. I like Patreon for the podcast because you have that private RSS feed. So I don't think the podcast will ever go anywhere. But as far as all the other content, you'll have a members area in the future on shingleplane.com. Yeah, we're having to do that, y'all. Because it's, it, I don't want to be like, hey, man, the writing is on the wall. Like, these shows ain't all sold out. Like, you're being baller blocked. You have hurdles. But I will say this, and I, I hinted towards it earlier. We saw some new faces. We saw some people with Oklahoma hats and stuff, So, and everybody was laughing. I don't give a damn what color skin you were. I mean, it was all kind of different colors in there, Asian people, black people, white people. And, uh, of course, a whole bunch of patriots and Latinos that like are down and understand what's, what the fuck is going on. Um, so, basically, it's almost like I need to branch out or recruit or cross over yeah. or target, like with our ads, like target some different people that's not just like, oh, you're a Latino comedian. It's more like, hey, man, you're a funny dude. For example, one couple told me, it was a, it was a Hispanic dude and an Asian lady. They said, hey, man, we got property in East Tennessee. Your message and what you talk about, he said, you had the bit about the guns and liberty and all this stuff. He's like, they would love that in East Tennessee. You know, Smoky Mountains, like, out oh, yeah. there. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I was like, and I'm thinking to myself, maybe I need to feature and open up for somebody else that has, like, a different fan base than mine so that people could be like, hey, I like what this kid's talking about. He's funny, but he's talking about some real shit, mm -hmm. you know. Very cool. <clears throat> so we shall see. Um, you know, this is a season eight, episode 96. We're creeping up on a hundo. And hopefully by the time we're in year two, year three, year four, people, especially my people, are going to be like, nah, yeah, for sure. We know where his YouTube is. Yeah. We know what the Patreon is. Like, we listen to podcasts now. Yeah. And, and that's just an, get caught up to date. 
we're going to get to the subjects, everybody. Don't worry. And if you aren't a patron on Friday's episode, we're going to have a lot of the things we don't get to. And we have questions from the TIA that people submitted this morning. There's tons of questions. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. I, I really did kind of want to keep this one a little bit more casual just because <laughs> last week we talked about a lot of stuff that wasn't necessarily like uh, political or anything. It was just like life shit. Like what's going on? Uh-huh. Everybody right now is going through their own shit, whether you're a pilot, whether you're, you know, an EMT, a nurse, a nurse, uh, a teacher, military, whatever you, whether you're working at a distribution plant that's trying to get shit out the door, like everyone's going through their own stuff. And just because you're an entertainer and selling tickets is your thing doesn't mean that it's not something that people gloss over. Like they get that they want to go see live entertainment. And if you can't get the word out, they're not seeing it. And if I can't hop on a plane to get there right. and if gas is too high. Right. Yeah. And if now who's going to be the pilots now? FEMA? National Guard, can they do that? That's a Southwest is a private company, but what happens when the federal government is mandating federal contractors that they got to be jabbed and these pilots don't want to? Well, the way that New York's getting the National Guard, which are like medically trained, I'm sure they could probably get National Guard that are because a lot of pilots are former uh, military, like they they've flown things before. So force them to work for a private company like like Southwest. I mean, aren't hospitals <coughs> most hospitals private companies? I don't know. I'm just speculating. Yeah. I guess yeah, they yeah. could, but... Somebody answer that and let us know on the, <laughs> yeah. on the Patreon. Or in the Discord. Now mm-hmm. we can say that. Yeah. People jumped in real quick. As soon as they got up, uh, I have it all automated. So if you're already... I, we made a post last night. We'll, uh, we'll get to this, I swear. But if you aren't familiar with it, there's a post with a very uh, thorough way to get on Discord and learn about it. Uh-huh. And then once you're in there, uh, the, the Patreon bot will automatically put you in, <laughs> this sounds weird, but it'll put you in your channel based on what tier you're in. Uh-huh. So we have a general, we have a chingo chats and a captain's room. And if you're in those tiers, you have the keys to those rooms to go in there. And some people were automatically, I guess already had Discord and I was getting notifications like, dun, 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 like join the you know general chat, join the room. So mm. it's exciting. It's cool. And I'm gonna teach you all about it later. Yes, please do. So anyway, uh, here's what we talk about today. Breezy, Joseph Raheem Breezy, polls are showing that his 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 fucking uh, approval ratings are plummeting. Like we're gonna get into it and talk about like ever in the history of ever of history of ever of history has there ever been a presidential candidate anywhere ever in history who plummeted like this? Anyway, I'm starting to think he didn't really have Obama type numbers, right? Wink, wink. Hey, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Also, Columbus Day wedding. I, have, I think it has to do with the Bidens as well. Oh, yeah. I got, I got deep into that for no reason. <laughs> for no, just to be messy. Yep. Also, former uh, Houston Police Department chief. Uh, chief. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Former HPD chief. Uh, he got fired out of Miami because they moved him out there. Hmm. I wonder. Uh, and a whole lot more. Don't forget to review the show on iTunes right now as we speak. All right. So Rasmussen. Uh, reports daily presidential tracking poll for Tuesday shows that 41% of likely U.S. voters approve of President Biden's job performance. 57% disapprove. The latest figures include 20% who strongly approve of the job Biden is doing and 50% who strongly disapprove. Yeah, so we've been seeing that week after week, right? I mean, it's not ticking up. It might start to tick up from here because it's almost like, can it go any lower? And even if it did, would they report that it would, you know, it's going any lower? And one of the articles that I pulled up uh, simultaneously kind of, kind of along with it, and I, I got out of it for whatever reason, I got out of the tab, but they were like, there's only one other person who's ever had a rating this low in history. One other, only one other president. Ended up being Trump right before the election, supposedly. So like the month before the election, his approval rating was where Biden's is now. Mm. And apparently he's the only other guy that's ever had it this low. I don't know if that's true. I'd have to go through and actually do the research, but... Of course, they're going to liken it to Orange Man. Yeah, yeah, of course, right? All roads lead back to Trump. Um, I think anybody with a brain can realize uh, it looks like they're attacking our oil industry. I mean, no matter how much Greta and everyone wants to push climate, 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 it's like, like, for example, I think Jen Psaki said, yeah, we don't like the gas price being high, but the climate emergency can't wait. What does that even mean? It's like, first of all, lady, we were just energy independent. On day one, your boy shut down the Keystone pipeline, killed all kind of jobs. Meanwhile, he approved the pipeline so that Russia can get their money over there, right, through Germany. And people ain't stupid, man. They're realizing we're, we're not headed in a good direction. There's a lot of insecurity, like homeboy promised he was going to be empathetic and and not tweet mean and he was going to fix everything and that he had a plan for covid 
well, I guess the Delta variant caught y'all off guard. Or maybe these jabs ain't doing what y'all wanted them to do. Maybe people are too hesitant. Maybe y'all's messaging is bad. But the whole thing is weird. The FJB chants are happening everywhere. We see it at the gas pump. We're about to start seeing a dark winter that they promised, supply shortages. Like, y'all used to make fun of Doomsday Preppers. Like, look at this motherfucker got a tourniquet in his motherfucking bug out bag. <laughs> you goofy motherfucker. What you got a bug out bag talking about? Oh, I have multiple months worth of food per person in my house. And now you're like, what's the website? So I can get start with at least a six week, four week package per member of my house. Dude, if you're not going to the store like now, I, I hate to sound like that kind of person, dude, but it really is. Like, if you ever made fun of Alex Jones in the past, you're probably eating your words right now for a lot of reasons, not just like prepping kind of conversations, yeah. but just shit he's talked about. <clears throat> so, yeah, he don't I, seem that crazy to me no more, <laughs> right? <laughs> how many <laughs> how many times in the past did you really be like, man, this is Alex Jones, motherfucker, crazy? Yeah, man. a lot of times because I'd be like, crisis actors, and then especially the Sandy Hook thing. And really, a lot of those conspiracies, I'd be like, wait, you're telling me... Psyop. Yeah, like psychological operation, bro, really? But uh, I was going to say, just water, you know, the... the, the uh, one, I don't want to drop the company's name. Maybe we'll work with them. But something that provides food for you to have Water hold, purification store. system. Yes, and, uh, and cash. I always say, go to the ATM. If you feel like weather's going to be bad, if you feel like something's going down, go have some cash on hand in case you you have to go somewhere. And hopefully the dollar sustains and it, we don't drop our, uh, our uh, what is it, the gold standard, like the reserve. Reserve currency. Yeah, reserve currency. So, hey, cash is cool until it just starts to look, until inflation gets so high uh, where it's like, oh, how much for that dozen of eggs? Uh, $85. And then it's like, how much of my money's worth $85 now. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't like eggs anyway. The purchasing power. Well, there's a shortage on those uh, in some places. I think I'm joking. In I love Maine. eggs. Yeah, in Maine, I think there's a shortage. But um, anyway, ammo. Ammo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, call me what you want. Call me cuckoo. Call me crazy. Call me a coconut. Call me sellout. Like, I know a lot of shit we talk about goes over Rasa's head because I see the comments. Ah, this fool thinks he's white. This fool wants to be gringo bling. This fool's coconut bling. This fool, he's on Trump's nuts. This fool wants to be Republican so bad. No, bitch. I just like freedom and the Constitution and... I like how shit was in 2019. Smaller government. I, yeah. Stay out of my business. I don't like all these mandates. I don't like the fact that the government could just be like, well, y'all about to see some martial law vibes. You're going to start seeing FEMA. Can you imagine this? All right. On McGowan, they got that detour. I don't know if you've been down McGowan. But there's a like a little detour where you got to turn left, go around the block to get back on McGowan. Why? Construction. But can you picture... Uh, a green military Humvee now and a dude standing there with a rifle and he's telling you he's directing traffic now because somebody didn't want the jab and you're seeing it from like they're attacking our infrastructure like you see a, a shortage on truck drivers a short a labor shortage that is not good for your economy we have a labor shortage so all of Breezy's economic policies are exasperating these Things that are happening. You see all these shipping containers can't they can't undock. All of our supply chain is dependent on China. Hit the button. It comes from China. Our supply chain has been a little bit too dependent on China. So now we're seeing hiccups. Now we're seeing delays. Now that fact is being weaponized against us, right? So hey. Uh, it's going to be a dark winter like Joseph Breezy uh, had promised. Do you think that people, do you think the fog's kind of clearing for a lot of people? And I know we're talking about things that makes it sound that way, but if we're talking like on a national scale, if these, if we take these polls for what they say as, as factual as they could possibly be, yeah. do you think the fog is lifted for a majority of America where they're like, man, we fucked up. Well, I feel like he didn't really have all that support to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. I know I'm not allowed to be like, allegedly, 81 million, whatever. But the independents, if you look at the poll numbers on independents, they've already were like, if anything, they were kind of on the fence. He lost them. Um, what, I don't know how many Democrats actually were like, yeah, gung-ho about this dude because they were anti-Trump or whatever. But how many of those people has he lost? Um, I know some of my lefty comedian friends, you know, a little bit have been like, yeah, man, you know, like he promised us he was going to pay off student loans. He ain't do that. That was kind of a carrot on a stick for me. And I'm seeing that he didn't even do that. And, you know, of course, 
the media is going to spin and deflect and try to, but every once in a while you have a Jake Tapper at CNN that's like, these numbers are not good. <laughs> like the the job report. Where, like, what do you say? Brutal? I think he was Yeah, like, they're brutal. <laughs> oh, these poll numbers are brutal. Yeah. Hey, asshole, y'all covered for him. <laughs> this whole cabal, like y'all covered for him. It's like the laptop story, y'all ran all the hoaxes. Everything from the fine people hoax when supposedly Trump called Nazi, Nazis fine people, the drink bleach hoax, the uh, makes fun of disabled people hoax. I mean, on and on and on and on. All of Trump's crises were media manufactured. But now, here's what I worry about. I'll be telling Marisol, I was like, look, they going after the nurses, the cops, the military and the pilots. When the National Guard had to sleep in the parking garage, uh, I think it was January. What was that? It was around the election. Yeah, it was like January 20th or something. Was it after January 6th? or oh, When oh. they were recounting votes. Yeah, I it was after re- inauguration. Something weird, right? Mm-hmm. That weird inauguration they had. Um, when they had the National Guard sleeping in the, in the parking garage, they had been vetted already. Meaning, they went through their social media and see if you had a uh, don't tread on me post or give me liberty, give me death or <laughs> hey, let's go. Tr- let me find out you're wearing a red hat. Dude, let me tell you, let me say this. If anything ever happens where we're caught up in, or I actually speak for myself, I'm caught up in some kind of crazy situation like that. No, it's because of this podcast. I'm. What, what, what do you mean? If if anyone comes knocking at my door, asking questions, saying, "Hey, do you like liberty? Is that a come and take it fucking banner in your garage or whatever?" It's because of this podcast. Because I'm a fucking. If it, if I'm not here and I'm not with my wife and kids and I'm not fucking playing video games or podcasting, I'm a fucking boring person. But if they're gonna kind of try to plant something on me, it's because of this podcast. <laughs> Damn, Rob. I'm just saying. This motherfucker paranoid. <laughs> it's like, is it because I'm sitting next to this U.S. flag, this beautiful old glory? Yeah. Is that what it is? 100%. But uh, I feel like I might have red-pilled some people this weekend in Addison um, just because, you know, I, one dude said, he's like, man, uh, good show, man. I, I think my wife's starting to, she's starting to kind of get get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, All like, quiet and shit. Like I told you, I, I talked a little bit about like, I even did an Australia thing. And when, I, when I'm talking about the guns, I'm like, look at Australia. Then politicians convinced them to hand them all in that the guns are, are bad. <clears throat> I was like, now they're handling Australia. I was like, it's a prison island. They'd be like, get back in your house, mate. It's like, sorry, mate. It's yeah. like, ain't shit you could do, mate. Ain't nothing you could do. You ain't got no guns. They, Dude, pun- they punking you. Dawn has a, she has an old friend, an old family friend. I think she's <clears throat> Thai as well or some kind of Asian, right? And I uh, hope that's okay to say. And uh, she found out the kind of podcast that I, I did and, or worked on, right? And ever since then, she's been sending Dawn like little snippets of red pills because she's extremely red pilled. And I was like, oh. And now, because I don't ever, again, I don't ever put those kind of topics on the table unless you bring stuff up. But she'll bring things out that are like, I was like, oh, yeah, we talked about it on the podcast. Like, oh, yeah, we mentioned it on the show. So not that Dawn's ever been like a lefty Larry at all, but she's instead, it, it's, it's more so that like people that are completely unaware are becoming aware and being like, oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. So <clears throat> it opens yeah. up the discussion. And again, it, 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 it depends a lot on like who's assigning you an opinion, who's breaking stuff down. Like what are your sources, right? Like whether it's who do you, where do you get your info about communism versus capitalism? Where are you getting that info from? You right. know what I'm saying? Like, or where do you work in and what are you seeing all of a sudden happen and, and why is it happening? Like now I'll say that she works in a certain industry that's having a huge impact on distribution and their lead times for clients are going from four weeks to 12 weeks now. For the client getting their yeah. goods? Woods. It's w- wood goods. Oh. Yeah. What's up with that? What is it? Truck drivers? Is it Dude, like it's a combination s- of everything. It's a combination. Supply chain. It's or? a combination of people not being able to find drivers, not being able to find if they're independents, you know, and they're having to pay for their own stuff. You gotta think of fuel costs, you gotta think of just a lot of the things that go to getting the material, having it processed and made into whatever you want, and getting it from where you made it to where it has to be, right? <laughs> It's just a fucking, again, it's, it sounds boring, but it's a supply chain, and you have to take into account every variable in that supply chain. Well, we took it for granted. And look, hypothetically speaking, if you wanted to hurt America, cripple America, attack America, you might want to somehow disrupt supply chains, make it to where you're in charge of controlling when you gonna get the goods right. you know what i'm saying let's just say pretend i want to control the south china sea where 75 percent of all maritime trade goes through you you know what i'm saying and you don't like america like basically if you don't like america this is some of the stuff you might want to do make their gas high make their dollar weak um make people dependent 
on the government, like not want to go to work. Um, inflation, maybe get them in more debt, maybe print more trillions, more like government spending, government programs. You may want to maybe start having mandates for the nurses, doctors, and pilots, and, and so on, the teachers. Maybe you make their youth really pansy-like and dork fucking sensitive kids yeah i'm talking all you fucking kids little soy boys oh, fucking suck oh, testosterone ain't even existent what's going on so of course you'll attack them culturally mm -hmm. you'll confuse them with the fog of war like if you wanted to hurt america it would look like this you would you would maybe leave 84 billion dollars in the hands of terrorists who don't like america perhaps you couldn't write a movie the way the last 18 months have unfolded I mean, if you wanted to hurt America, it would literally look damn near just like this. Like if we literally sat here, like <laughs> we sat here, we're like, all right, we're going to we're going to plan on a movie. Right. All right. What's the plot? You know, we start talking about it and we just write out what's happened in real life. The last 18 months be like, that's so unbelievable. No one's going to watch that. It sounds that sounds dumb. Uh, yeah. It'd be like, exactly. If you pitched that movie in, I don't know, 2018, 2019, be like, yeah, it's going to be like a pandemic. And then they're going to, you know. People going to be divided and then a lot of propaganda and, and disinformation. And the most popular president in history loses by, you know, a landslide. <laughs> as he was gaining, as he gained more new voters, um, it'd be like everything from like there'd be some allegations about the mail-in ballot stuff and censorship goes up supply chains are fragile people are insecure about what the dollar's doing people I think mean, freedom of speech is bad yeah like freedom sounds like it'd be under attack they'd be like so you mean every institution is just flipped on its head yeah yeah, yeah. we can't make that that'll never happen be like that's not even believable right our supply chains are great why would we have shortages in the number one country in the world I, who <laughs> who thought we would have been here in october 20 this got to be a clip who thought we would have been here october 2021 supply chain hiccups Shortages on the shelves, dark winter, gas is high, job reports low, inflation is up, growth is slow, stagflation. This is how I wanted to start the show. Welcome to day 576 of 15 days to slow the spread. Goofy. Day 576 since 15 days to slow the spread. I mean, arguably, we're not like locked down the way. No, we've got a pretty good comparison, but if we're talking about these things for other people around the country that don't have it this good, because we know plenty of them in different parts of the coasts, for example. Yeah, like New York City, you got to show your paperwork. Yeah. Imagine imagine being that client who's, you know, having to prepare for jobs, right? Need your material or, material or whatever, and there's a, a 12 week lead time. It's October. You won't get your shit till January, February. What does that do for industries? I don't know, but it can't be good. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Can you imagine if you start seeing FEMA and National Guard being the bus drivers? Oh, they're already doing that in some states. I think Massachusetts. There was a bus driver shortage. They had to use National, National Guard, Guard. Yeah. to drive the kids. Can you imagine you start seeing Red Cross, FEMA, well, no, maybe not Red Cross. You start seeing FEMA, damn near like United Nations, but you start seeing FEMA and National Guard every motherfucking where. And here's the real threat. Can you imagine if they start saying, oh, it's a climate emergency now. No, we state of emergency. You ain't see the, and they'll, and they'll give you some funny data. Like, no, no, look, the air quality right now, look at these numbers. The same way they did with the pandemic, cases and this and that. They'll be like, no, nah, look, pollution, and we're basing it off this study. And if you go against it, you finna get fact checked and deplatformed, and you better stay in your house and you gotta have this app now because it's gonna read your carbon emission footprint and you can't leave your house. You got a QR code everywhere. And, it's so easy for them to be like, state of emergency, the new emergency now. Okay, we're not worried about COVID no more. Now it's climate. It's going to be martial law vibes. Stay in your motherfucking house. Have you uh, heard of the book, How to Lie with Statistics? I haven't read it, but I heard of it. We should get it and read it because I don't think it's a very long book and then just kind of go through it on the podcast. Yeah, because people don't understand statistics. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and Bill Gates is famous for saying to read that book. And uh, if you read it, and I've seen people that kind of reviewed it and go, gone through it, you can take out a lot of the things in that book and just connect the dots to things that are being said and tossed around right now. Yeah, like Biden hopped on TV, Joseph Raheem Breezy hopped on TV, Brandon hopped on TV and said, 
oh yeah, you're hearing about people getting fired. You know, you're hearing about the nurses and stuff getting fired. But look at the big story. The big story is now we have a larger percentage of people vaccinated. Bitch, because you fired the unvaccinated. So what does that do? It makes your percentage of vaccinated higher, you big dummy. <laughs> you using statistics to twist shit up. And if you a fucking normie and you ain't pay attention in third grade, you might be sitting at home like, oh, that does sound good. Brandon's doing a good job. You big dumb bitch. <laughs> All right, what's up with this Columbus Day wedding? All right, so... Um I think Columbus Day is another one we should do it like a separate podcast on too, just because you know Columbus has definitely a dark past. You know, he wasn't the best guy, but uh, it is Columbus Day nonetheless, and uh, he discovered America allegedly, right? Mm -hmm. No, but he took the day off. Joe Breezy, your boy, said mm -hmm. I'm gonna take some uh, you know rest and relaxation time in Delaware. <laughs> okay, wow, wow, everything's going to shit. All right, go on. Yeah. And uh, he stopped by, I guess, on the way back to his nephew's wedding. His nephew's name, I think, is pronounced Cuff. It's C U F F E. Mm, I don't okay, know. Okay, it, okay. You might as well should be cuck once you see him. Okay. But um, if the internet loads here. He married Megan O'Toole King, the White House said. King is a former reality TV star who appeared on The Real Housewives of Orange County. She sure did. <clears throat> Megan O'Toole King was married to a former pro uh, Major League Baseball player, has three kids. Her ex-husband is now dating a former threesome partner of theirs named Courtney O'Connor. So basically, Biden's nephew married a chick who used to be uh, in a threesome situation with a ball player. Okay. <laughs> That's her. All right. All right. She's had three kids, too. Yeah, three kids. Three kids. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her genetics. She got a big old diamond ring on the finger. That's from that ball player. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm talking about MLB plays. And she was on the Real Housewives of Orange County. So mm -hmm. what did Joseph, did he do anything embarrassing? Or weird at this wedding? No, um, not that I could find. Because once I, I saw her, I was like, oh, who's this? And I'm like, okay. And then who's that guy? And he was a former center fielder for a bunch of MLB teams. And then I found the uh, story that he, you know, like cheated, had some kind of affair with somebody and then hooked up with somebody else, got together with somebody who was once their threesome partner. <clears throat> and it was nice. just like a really weird, spicy story. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. And he's uh, like, I'm going to go marry my ex threesome partner. Yeah. Uh, that was really it. It was just kind of like, it was so like, like, uh, what's that mag inquirer type of yeah, news? Yeah, yeah. But, but the, it started with a New York Post article of how, you know, Biden just didn't talk to reporters when he got back from the, when he left or got back to DC. Uh, he just kind of went and did his own thing, went to this wedding, un ignored all, you know, issues that were going on that day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep talking about more of those issues, but this was, this was kind of like the highlight of the rest of the article was just this, uh, this marriage. I can't find the picture of his nephew, but guys, if you want to go look up, his name's like <laughs> Cuff Owens. He, he looks like, um, he looks like he was once a lady, but whatever. Looks like Cuck Owens. <laughs> All right. So former HPD chief, Art Acevedo, he, he marched with BLM too. He did. You remember, you remember I that? I do remember that. Yeah. During the, uh, the summer riots. He kneeled and everything, I think. Everything. And, and I guess to give him benefit of the doubt, I'm like, on one note, I'm like, okay, you got to be careful. You're not siding with the people that want to vilify and defund your motherfucking crew. Uh, but this is, this is how I interpret some of this stuff. I've, mm -hmm. I heard that sometimes there's like minority police chiefs and their job is almost like when a city, when a big Democrat city mm -hmm. needs... A woke police chief that's that's a person of color, like they're they they're like in demand. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. almost like, all right, we shot a dude by mistake, people are mad. We need to bring in a woke person of color chief mm. to come do the fucking kneeling and the, and all that. Is Miami red? I mean, is Miami woke? I believe Miami's uh, bluish with the uh, mayor and all that. Okay, I wasn't sure because so one of the main things that attributed to his. Suspension and eventual termination, because the city manager or whatever has said that they're looking to terminate him, was that he said that Miami's ran by the Cuban mafia. That's what Chief Art Acevedo said? Yeah. Miami is ran by the Cuban mafia. He's Cuban, though, too. So you gotta Art Acevedo is? Yeah. Really? That's what the article said. Huh. Who is the Cuban mafia? Does he mean, like, just big wig, rich, political, connected? That's what the article was uh, speculating or, or kind of insinuating. 
So hmm. I don't know. I mean, you got to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, I guess. Maybe he was trying to do good and was finding out some corrupt type shit. But mm. he's also been, from what I read, uh, in charge of a lot of big uh, precincts or play, you know cities that he's always had issues with people. So I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's a character flaw. Maybe he's not as, as good as the article made it sound. I don't know. But I know he didn't have a lot of love here in Houston. I mean, I guess it's 50-50 depending on who you are. Ain't no telling. No. <clears throat> All right, so Attorney General Merrick Garland's son-in-law is the co-founder of an educational data mining company that promotes CRT. So the same guy, the Attorney General Garland, the same guy that's sicking the FBI and stuff on the moms that are that are complaining at the stu- at the uh, student board whatever the school, school board, board at the school board saying hey we don't like all this weird freaky shit that's in some of these books some of this weird sexual stuff y'all forcing this pronoun stuff and this critical race theory stuff and y'all not even focusing on reading and science and math which is going to help these kids get a good job so that we can compete as a country instead you're trying to make them all woke little commie neo marxist weirdos Yes, yes, that's him. You nailed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so A.G. Merrick Garland, he has a son-in-law who is the co-founder. What is an educational data mining company? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you exactly what. So the company is called Paranorma Equity. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Paranorma Equity and Inclusion Survey provides schools and districts with a clear picture of how students, teachers, and staff are thinking and feeling about diversity, equity, and inclusion in school. Okay, it, it is the most ridiculous shit I've ever read. Diversity and equity. So, as the New York Times reported in 2018, Garland's daughter, Rebecca, married Alexander Zantanner, uh, co-founder and president of Paranorma Education, a Boston-based software and analytical data service company that boasts its founders were once student activists. Okay, these are the kind of people that are coming up with this shit. Uh, the bride's father, Judge Merrick B. Garland, took part in the ceremony giving a tribute to the couple. The bride's father is the chief judge in the United States Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia in Washington. Her mother advises government and nonprofits uh, groups on voting system security and accuracy issues. So it's like, again, you have this pool of like, it's, it's just it's ripe for fuckery, you know? Yeah. Yeah, especially if, if you know you can get a contract and you know you can somehow manipulate data for example Mm -hmm. for example let's do some data mining at a school district or a school to see how kids feel about diversity and equity now how are we going to ask the question to the kids so that we can get the answers we want so Paranormal produces a data mining surveys for schools, including equity and inclusion surveys, and conducts professional development training in areas of equity and inclusion for teachers and administrators People surveys. like this is exactly what's what's being the downfall of public education. So they go in and do surveys. Mm-hmm. They're already biased. So then they probably turn around and take that data. And then a, a woke school board can use that data from this company as ammunition to be like, this is why we're teaching uh, CRT and, and things similar to CRT. Because, because the data shows, according to, what is it, Paranorma, mm-hmm. um, that kids really feel... Like, they need to learn some woke shit. And not only that, but I was listening to... I want to try to get uh, Gad Sad on the podcast. You know who that is? Hell yeah. Evolutionary biologist. He's one of my favorite guests I've ever heard Man, on any dude, show. Dude, if we could pull that off, bro. I'm taking you to the strip club. Hey, all right. We, yeah, so all the patrons, we're going to need a separate fund. Hey, man. Because uh, we got Gad Sad and... Uh, Holla. Rob, we finna drop off Rob at Onyx. Just <laughs> drop me off and lay like... Par- right, Paradise City with DJ Taco. Be like... <laughs> Like, <laughs> like it's a uh, Shout like it's a field trip taco. Like it's a field trip taco. Take care of him. Make sure he, he takes a break to get some lunch. Yo, so check it. I'm I recently I heard him saying that this kind of equity inclusion stuff it applies to people. Let, let's just say professors that are trying to get a role or a promotion inside of a of a educational fucking establishment. Right. Let's just say. You have to, let's say, uh, write a some kind of dissertation or a thesis on blah, blah, blah. And then you have different different steps uh, along the process to get this role, right? Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things is an equity and inclusion test of sorts. And if you aced everything else, but you didn't do well on the equity and inclusion test or portion, you could basically kiss that position or roll goodbye. All this woke stuff, man. If you look at it through the lens of... We're having a cultural revolution. We have communist sympathizers. We got woke people, neo-Marxists, that are 
penetrating our educational systems, like infecting our youth with these really, really bad ideas. You know what I mean? Like this just postmodern crap yeah. about gender and all this. You're just confusing these kids. And it's very unfortunate that that's literally what's happening. They're attaching the educational system. Some people, they're not really paying attention. So they're just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just assuming that there's none of these little Soviet tattoo. Uh, I'm going to turn them into radicals in 45 days or whatever these teachers get caught on tape saying. That's why the moms are pissed. Yeah. And the fact that our government is more worried about parents at the school board than actual fucking terrorists. Right. Like, this literally looks like a woke regime trying to fuck up our country. I know it sounds like I've been watching too much Fox News. Like, <laughs> some of this shit sound like, Chingo, you need to really settle down. I mean, you it, have a Fox Nation subscription. Yeah, they got good documentaries on there. But 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 just as a, as a caveat, like, I'm not 100% sold on Fox News because it's owned by foreigners. It's not even owned by Americans. Right. It's the Murdochs, and it's a business, and they're for profit, and they're going to sensationalize. Mm -hmm. And they pick and choose what they want to cover. So they're kind of like controlled opposition, even though Tucker be pointing out some important shit. But they don't really seem super conservative to me. Like they don't really be covering the election audits, a lot of stuff. Uh, and they called the Arizona election real early. They were like, and Biden won Arizona moving right along. They did. They did. And it's like, oh, the Murdochs, y'all tripping. Going back to that, though, before we, we move on, uh, you know, we, we do say it all the time, and it, it does it does sound like there's no way that this uh, old decrepit man could have had that kind of popularity. Whatever. However you want to phrase it. But it it almost seems like this is working into the hands of the people that would want you to believe that it was, you know, a fair, you know, a secure election, and that if you were to deny it, Maybe you just lose all faith in the establishment, right? And in, in the, the voting establishment, I guess, or in the process. And then maybe you just stop caring, stop voting, and just say, I'm done with it. And then it just kind of lets them, let's just say that something happened and there was fuckery afoot and they pulled it off. They got this old man in there, right? That's what it looked like. That's what it looks like, right? So mm -hmm. fast forward, now that we've been a year through this, three years from now, if people really do just kind of give up on it and stop believing that their vote counts, that's it. It's, it's game over, right? It's checkmate. But if you listen to content like this, you go through the other, you know, conservator-ish, you know, uh, center-right kind of people, and uh, you open up your mind a little bit more, and then more people rally behind that idea, then you start making a difference. Then you go back to, like, the that that phrase of, like, be so good they can't ignore you. Or, or, who said that? I think it was the comedian. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, be undeniable. Basically. Uh, a manager named Barry Katz. Yeah, so you get to the polls in three years from now and there's so, there's such a wave of people that are like, you didn't fool me. I didn't give up. You're fucking, that's not happening again. That's the better outcome, obviously. Well, people predicting a landslide for the Republicans in uh, 22 midterms. And there are also a lot of polls, uh, some, some polls that show Trump's popularity right now is greater than Biden's popularity right now. So they're anticipating, like, if the election was tomorrow, it'd be a landslide. Maybe like the last time, right? A landslide in Trump's favor. That same article that I told you at the beginning of the podcast that referenced who else has had this low of a, of a rating, and it was Trump the month before the election last year, said at the end of that article that if we were to have an election today, Trump would only win by one point. Who said that? I forgot what article it was. Whoever was talking about the, uh, not Rasmussen, but whoever got me to that uh, poll mm -hmm. number. So either way, even if they are willing to admit it, if it's a point, it's a point. But if it's a landslide, I mean, it could be anywhere in between. Point is, both sides are saying he would win. The point is, is we're witnessing the Biden implosion. Like, debacle after debacle. Afghanistan, the fuel prices. You know what I mean? Like, wait till China busts a move on Taiwan. Wait till China busts a move on Taiwan. And, and we say stuff though like this is a, these are landslides for the Republicans. This isn't to say that those people are going to do anything better, right? But the idea would be maybe that the country shifted into a, a, pl a, a place of stability at the very least, right? Not this chaos that we're in. So it would be up to us and people that are like, yeah, all right, we voted that nonsense out. You're back in. Show us what you're doing for us and what you're going to do, and just hold these people feet to the fire. Whether it's uh, you know Bobart or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Dan Crenshaw, or whoever these congressmen and officials are. What are you going to do now? I think too many people are paying attention now to just kind of skim through. I think for for decades now, people have just been skimming through like, oh, the 113th Congress, the 114th Congress, and it just people keep coming in and out and nothing happens. But now because of this pandemic, 
That's not going to fly anymore. Well, it's because you got you know you got rhinos. Sure. You got these fake ass Republicans. You got the Uniparty. Um, you know the rich, the super super mega rich. They got to pay their fair sh- fair share. You know why? Because the big donor class are all Democrat. These are all blue people. The ones that are backing up the Clintons and you know. I mean, look at Mark Zuckerberg. How many millions of dollars did he put into uh, those election boxes? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, let's tax the rich, AOC. Let's tax them because most of them are Democrat. <laughs> and, you know, the Uniparty and these rhino Republicans, they got to go. Mitch McConnell got to go. Mm-hmm. How did he cave to these, um, this debt ceiling thing? You know what I mean? Like, they're trying to spend us into oblivion on purpose. And they're trying to, like, deflect from all the dumb fuck shit they got going on, from all these debacles, Afghanistan and all this, they trying to deflect by passing this stimulus and, you know, infrastructure and all this bull crap. All right, so the New York Times ran a correction. I guess they put some statistics about children being hospitalized, and the number was, like, way blown out of proportion. Yeah, so uh, I think I pulled up a few of them. One of them was just Daily Mail. Daily Mail, I feel, is like a good... Like it's 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 UK. It's like I probably trust them a little bit more than some of the publications here. But but they're lefty, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but the report was nine hundred thousand. Remember that it was nine hundred thousand children have been hospitalized uh, in the U.S. When the true figure is closer to sixty three thousand. Yeah, super off. Trying to scare y'all, dude. Super and, off. And, and it comes and it comes around the time that they're trying to push towards getting the vax um, FDA approved for the youngsters, for the little bitty little bitty kids. So check this out. I don't want to say names, right? But there was a comedian. All right. In the green room. Okay. Right? There was a couple of comedians in the green room. And uh, Mighty Solo was there. And I'm there. We're in the green room. Addison. And somehow it came up. And, it, and this person who shall remain unnamed. Sure. Looked at Mighty Solo and was like, wait, you're, you're not vaccinated? And she's like, no. And then I'm like, shit, me either. And he's like, you're not vaccinated either? Like, super surprised. And then he says, you're not scared to catch COVID? I was so overwhelmed with data, facts, statistics of like, so many things came to mind. I was so shocked. (laughs) I was so shocked that I didn't even know where to go with it. Like, I didn't (laughs) even know to be like, why should I be? Do you even know the chances of me dying from that? Do you even know the, the percentage probability of me ending up in a hospital over that? Like, do you know the efficacy rate? Do you know it's leaky? Do you know the durability? Like, all these things. Like, you ain't heard of Project Veritas? You ain't seen the whistleblowers? Like, I, I literally... Like, you guys, everyone listen. When you're having to debate people, there's so many different debates, right? Like, right. I mean, I don't, I don't advise everyone to go, go get into a gun debate no, don't, or go don't get, get in, no. you know, go get into a freedom of speech debate, go get into the vax debate, go get into the mask debate. I'm not telling you go get into debates. Sometimes they come up sure. with, with friends and family, right? It's almost like we need the practice so that I literally was in shock. Like somebody that I know look at me and be like, you're not vaccinated either. You're not scared to catch COVID? I feel like saying, you know you can still catch it even though you got the jab. You know you can still spread it. You got to give me a better reason. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, um, and then my answer was, well, hold on. Let's put a pin on that. Let's go back to this communism thing. (laughs) I I want to finish the communism. (laughs) I I really want to finish the communism uh, conversation. Like, do you know how much... Uh, good competitive growth and innovation comes from capitalism like i was just what what's the word flabbergasted (laughs) i was floored Um, oh my god interesting you're not vaccinated you're not scared to catch covid can we dissect just that reaction for a little bit and this isn't even to pick on whoever this (laughs) your reaction's priceless (sighs) It's not even to pick on people. Let's just the people. Of course are, not. People, but, I, but I'm wondering, like, where are you getting your information? Well, that, that's what from? I wanted to get to, right? So the people aside, it just mm-hmm. topics. Just now, we're just talking about info, stats, topics, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. There's so many people in this country. A lot of them don't listen to content like this, apparently. You know, yeah, based yeah. on our our president and uh, the way things are going. Mm. So, what do you think? Just as a as a creative outside of the box thinker that you are, what do you think can be done? 
about that type of reaction to something that we 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 know both sides. We've heard both sides. We talk about both sides. We give you the we spit the facts from one side, spit the ones from the other, and then give you our opinion down the middle, right? Or at least we try to. Yeah. But when somebody is so that that's it. That that's all they know, and that's all that they've heard. How do we combat that? How do you think people can get over that? <clears throat> um, I think, and I'm just going to give you the answer off the top of my head. Sure. Which is, obviously, you want to remain patient and respectful because everyone's going to view things through their lens. Every, and my biggest thing is just be curious and wonder, like, hey, so, like, what kind, like, where you get your info from? Like, did you know that you could still catch it? You know, and sometimes it could get frustrating when you're talking to like your parents or a sibling or a, a, a lot of people, it's their spouse where they're having to try and like wake up or red pill and be like, honey, honey, it's getting serious. Like, let's just keep an eye on things. But if we start to see shortages, like there, you can go to marinetraffic.com and look at real life up to the moment the ships mm -hmm. in the ocean right full of things right christmas is around the corner if we end up having a little dark ass winter like like breezy had promised like where stuff ain't on the shelf toys gifts whatever things items um you know i didn't uh, put it on the uh, notes but that i was reading that earlier today if you want to buy christmas gifts buy them now ain't that a bitch uh natural gas the price of natural gas i, I don't want to give exact figures but i think it's like about to double so a lot of people that heat their homes in the winter using natural gas um just the price of all this stuff like start paying attention but uh going back to the thing about when you're having to sometimes debate or like when, like when i went on willie d and, and um scarface's show like I felt like I wasn't really a good debater because, you know, it's almost like how, it, it, you know what I mean? It's like you're in the moment. It's like, bro, where do I begin? Yeah. Like, how do I attack this? Because sometimes there's a huge gap between all the shit you see and how you see things and how other people are getting their information. And I was literally blown. I was floored. Like, you're, it was like priceless. It was like, oh. <gasps> You're not vaccinated? And it's like, me either. It's like, you're not vaccinated either? You're not scared to catch COVID? It's like, bro, I don't you're even get a flu shot. You're not scared to catch COVID. Well, yeah, I'm scared. I don't want to catch it. But if I do, that's going to give me more natural immunity. Whatever happened to herd immunity? You know what I'm saying? Like, we, the conversation has gone way off track yeah you know how the lockdowns um did a lot th did a number on people's minds like it really fucked with some people like depression went through the roof suicide all that stuff i think this is kind of like remnants of that like it's residue of, of being locked down being unsure of the future being be brainwashed being completely brainwashed while you're locked down like if you're already not listening to alternative media in any way and you're locked down and you're only listening to mainstream media it only intensifies, right? It adds fuel to that fire. So then you get back out into the world, kind of, you know, you should be able to start do stuff again, get back on whatever you're doing, let's say performing. And then you're around other people who in that time decided to think outside the box and go outside of the mainstream narrative and find alternative uh, media. It, it makes it really hard to get back together and reconvene. It really does. I have a friend who yesterday told me that her mom, her and her mom don't talk anymore. She didn't even attend her U of H graduation. <laughs> Over what? Vexed, being jabbed and not jabbed. So she, the mom's jabbed. The, the mom is super, you know, jabbed and fearful of being in crowds and all that. For no reason. There's no underlying conditions. Like masks outside by herself. That kind, her, yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And daughter's super active, very healthy, not jabbed, all about natural immunity. Um, listens to Rogan. 100%. Yeah, listens to RPT. <laughs> and um, she's like, it's tough, man, because it's just me, my mom, and my three sisters. And now I can't get together without having an argument. And now we just don't see each other. So again, step one. What sources, what sources of information, what media outlets is the mom consuming? You would have to get, I mean, I'm going to just assume. I don't really know. But let's just say it's just Telemundo. Like, let's say that's it. Mm. Lefty ass Telemundo. And it's, it sucks because it doesn't have to be that way, right? It's not supposed to be that way. It's not, the, the America's supposed to be about what's your idea, what's my idea, and let's talk about which one's better. Oh, whatever happened to science? Well, that went out the window. Whatever, happened to, whatever happened to, like, data? Like, for example... Dr. Robert Malone, the inventor of the mRNA technology, right? Who arguably many people think he should be eligible for a Nobel Peace Prize. 
he's against this particular jab. He says it's going to exasperate the situation where you're going to get a lot more mutations because it's not really effective or durable. And you're going to, this little bug that was made in a lab with taxpayer dollars um, leaked somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, YouTube. Fucking beep everything. Yeah. What a fucking pain in the ass. Anyway, um, it's a it's a smart little bug. <clears throat> and it gets stronger. And y'all might be creating a super bug that yeah. might really do some damage. And with, simultaneously make your immune system weaker, I think. I remember reading as well. Like the cytokine, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the effect, reaction. Yeah. yeah. The cytokine react whatever however you say it, reaction. But um arguably we're setting up a situation where all the vax people or might cause a situation where we will, we will have a super bug and that shit will do some damage damage. Do you have a pin in front of you? Hey, write down on, on the next notes for, for the next episode. There was a, I'll try to find the video of the amount of, of uh, deaths that happened just before, like before the, any kind of jab was, was released. Right. And then after the jab was it like released. went up, right? Oh dude, crazy. Like astronomically high. Like you're talking about like Joe breezy numbers in the middle of the night high. Between pre jab and post jab, like a super jump, like like in other words, our cases were lower when there was no jab. Not just cases, deaths in particular, deaths. And that's considering that VAERS isn't isn't getting accurate data. Exactly, and that takes that into account as well. So we'll talk about that on the Patreon <laughs> episode later. But so, um, so here's some things. This might have to be a clip to the San Antonio Current, who just public uh, uh, published a story about me. Um, didn't reach out for comment, didn't reach out for a quote, literally says something like, yeah, he did a video saying why he voted for Trump, but why would anybody want to hear that or care, right? Well, here's the reality, what working class Americans are noticing, maybe y'all at the SA Current are not noticing. Here are some things we're seeing, right? They're really starting to push this climate change thing, right? Uh, you're starting to see a lot more censorship from big tech. You're actually seeing like a merger between big tech, big pharma, and big government covering each other's ass. Um, more mandates. Don't act like y'all don't see the mandates. Less freedom, it seems like. More, more surveillance, bigger government. It's a shit show. Supply chains, you know. Do you want to read any of that from the... Uh, from the uh, read the article? <clears throat> like just a couple lines you read before we started recording. And then people are from San Antonio like, you know, this is what... <laughs> This is what he was reading just before. But they also shouted out my tour dates. Um, Shout so out. good for them. Okay, so San Antonio Current tweeted. This is at SA Current. As a comic, he's spoken about death threats from white nationalist groups and complained about being targeted by right-wing media. And then you would click on the thing. But I'm like, where are you getting this from? Who? When? Like, maybe there was one interview somewhere where they're like, who do you think is vandalizing your uh, van? I don't even think I had that vocabulary at the time. I didn't, I didn't know what a white nationalist group was. How would I know who vandalized my truck? If I don't have security footage, all I know is that they're, they were pro-border uh, security because they didn't like my message at the time, which said they can't deport us all on the side of the thing. So they delete the T one day. So it'd say they can deport us all, or they'll just come like scribble over the can't or every time we'd have it fixed. So maybe an article, uh, uh, someone in the past had saying, could it have been right wing something? And uh, maybe, I don't know if I maybe said, I guess it could be. <laughs> yeah. How would I know? I'm just assuming they're pro border security, which I am now. So they can't, the people at the SA Current, whoever wrote this, they can't wrap their mind around how a Mexican-American from Texas who has realized that the current situation at the border is not sustainable, the only people winning are the bad guys, fentanyl dealers, and sex traffickers, who's losing women, kids, and Haitian people that had to give up and sell everything they own to get trafficked. So let's read a little bit about it. Headline is, rapper, comedian, and Texas native, Chingo Bling, comes to LOL Comedy Club for a four-day stint. Yes, this comedian does some rapping. But how could he not with a name like Chingo Bling? Born Pedro Herrera III in Houston, Bling first came to public attention via, yes, his raps. The Tamale Kingpin, his debut album, gave a pretty good hint as to, as to his career direction. Mind you. We'll, we'll tie it back when we talk about Dave Chappelle. He did a good job of giving the context of like 
first 16 years ago they wrote a story about me taking things out of content then it gets referenced over Every and over time. Again, all the time branching out though he started a youtube channel to have an outlet for his humor and found himself with a burgeoning second career since then mr bling has made enough inroads on the comedy circuit that his first stand-up special the candor port us all aired on the meet through network and is now streaming on, on netflix no it was produced by me through and it streamed on netflix while it was licensed to them as a comic he's spoken about death threats from white nationalist groups I never talked about that as a comic and complained about being targeted by right wing media. Uh, well, there was a lady named Michelle Malkin who at the time I couldn't understand how she was like, I think, Filipina or, or Asian and was so anti-immigrant. And then it says, you might think such an outspoken Latino would oppose one Donald J. Trump. Well, the comedian is breaking the mold there, having produced a YouTube video about why he voted for the former guy. If you care about such matters, the video is still up. But really, do you care about why anyone supported Trump? No. No, you don't. <laughs> and then it says, here are the tickets and here are the prices. <sighs> do you care about why anyone supported Trump? No. No, you don't. Well, y'all the ones that are out of touch. Because South Texas, the working class Latinos, the border towns, they don't like this new form of policy. A lot of people don't like a lot of people, even people in Mexico, don't enjoy what's being the magnet of the pool of the message of Biden Harris saying, come, hurry up, come, come all, we got you, amnesty, welfare, we're going to put you on a plane, put you on the bus, we got rid of the wall, we got rid of the um, maintain, remain in Mexico policy. Every policy, but via executive order that Biden is doing, he is literally damn near partnered with sex traffickers you could argue he's the biggest sex trafficker in the country right now you can argue he's in cahoots with the cartel because they've been gifted a border they're spending money not to build the wall i mean all they're doing is cleaning up their mess and hiding the kids in cages and the people under the tents and the it's coming to a town near you. Every county about to be a border town. So don't act surprised that somebody like me and just like the people of the Rio Grande Valley and Del Rio and Acuna and all along the border are starting to wake the fuck up. So if anything, we're the trend. We have some sense. You are out of touch and you're trying to mischaracterize and create this false narrative of fuck this little sellout. Who cares what he got to say? You're wrong and you're misinformed. Bad journalism. There was a, a clip I think Myra for Congress had posted of a congressman, a current congressman down there from, I don't know if somebody she might be running against or whatever, but he even said that it's very apparent that down here in the RGV in South Texas, uh, our citizens are very concerned about border security and blah, blah, blah. And he went on this whole like, all right, we can't ignore it anymore. Like, was we, it Cuellar? I don't remember who it was. was is it, did you see his Mexican dude? Yeah. It might have been Cuellar because, it, and if it is, he's a Democrat who has no choice but to side with his constituents. So he'll be a Democrat, but he'll be like, uh, guys, um, I mean, there's 15,000 Haitians under the bridge. Right. So he kind of goes against party lines, goes against the narrative. And uh, by the way, on my, my new set, I've been working in some of that stuff where it's like my, my dad, after he gets his papers, he's like, mijo, what I see at the border, mijo, like it breaks my heart, mijo. That I'm an immigrant. I know it breaks my heart. Mira, pobrecito. We had kids in cages. Now we have 15,000 Haitians under the bridge. And, and he's going on and on about how he feels for them. And he feels so sad. And then he stops and he gets serious. And he's like, but what about us, the citizens? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's when the punchline, <laughs> boom. It's like, oh, he's about to go in. Like, <laughs> he's like, you think all the Afghanis are vetted? Anyway, go That's on. funny. No, man. Yeah, so... It's it's gonna be an interesting uh, show for us here in Texas as far or well everybody really but with midterms coming up next year and I, I I was gonna say at the beginning of the podcast I feel like when you said you know year two year three year four this podcast is really gonna have a place <clears throat> in the culture of what's going on similar to and I've never made this comparison and I'm not trying to compare the show to anybody else's but the way that the Chapo Trap House show did when Hillary and Trump were going against each other for that uh, presidential race or whatever they were. They, they kind of just boomed, you know, talking about Hillary and Trump. What, what, what was their take on those two? Uh, if I remember correctly, they were, they were more Hillary, pro-Hillary than they were Trump, I believe. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I haven't listened to that show in forever, and I don't remember what I read on their wiki. But um, whatever it was, 
They exploded on their commentary. Um, I don't know what the show's like now after so much time, but it's still one of the top Patreon podcasts and one of the top podcasts in like this kind of subject. Mm. So interesting. I gotta yeah. ch- I gotta check them out. You're not vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> So we got another RPT to do. Yeah. We're going to do a Chingo chat, take a potty break, and uh, we'll get to some uh, questions from the TIA and have some fun. For sure. Thank you guys so much. That was episode number 96, Red Pill Tamales, season number eight. Please share the clips. Be a force multiplier. Spread the word. Tell a friend. Um, make clips of your own. If there's something we said on there or something we addressed or some things we mentioned, if you don't mind, take a little screen grab. You know, post it somewhere, tag us, show show your friends and family, uh, people that agree with you, and more, most importantly, people that maybe don't. Um, that's the only way I feel that people are going to really start to pay attention as to, like, some of the damage, which we may not be able to course correct. If they, at this rate, right. four years of this, I can only imagine. But thank you guys so much. Uh, keep your head on a swivel, stay up, and we'll talk to you later. Peace.